Again, I, I can't reiterate this enough. It is so important that we are out there connecting with people, networking. And I know sometimes the word network can be like a dirty word to people who are shy or whatever, but don't think of it as networking. Just thinking of it, I'd like to say is being a good human, being a curious person, uh, getting to know people, getting to know what they do. And even if you're like, hmm, I don't have a need for a plumber, or I don't have a need for a new hairstylist or this or that. When you meet people, save their card, listen to them, be curious, tell them a little bit about yourself, and you never know how you can help one another out uh, in the future. And so my guest today, Michelle Polito, is someone that I actually met through two of my previous guests, uh, Jenna, you might remember Jenna Urban. I had her on a little bit over a year ago. And Jenna is uh, kind of a Renaissance woman and doing all kinds of a variety of things. And she is great on social media. So check out Jenna. And then Tara, and that's so funny. When I had Tara on, I, I didn't know how to say her name. And then I tried it again and I messed it up. It's Machaco, I believe, but I massacred it last time I said it. Uh, Tara is the head coach at uh, Marywood University for their basketball, women's basketball. She was on a couple of months ago. Uh, we were talking about the uh, popularity of the WNBA, thanks to Caitlin Clark in part. And uh, we had a great conversation. So I got to meet this guest, Michelle, because she is a cousin to Jenna and Tara. And we also got to meet in person for the first time at the Scranton Chambers uh, Empowerment Leadership uh, Conference that they hold. And it's just a great event that brings wonderful women together. And Michelle had, uh, she was a vendor there with her business, Electric City Suites. And we'll talk all about that, her business and everything else. But let's just get started in getting to know Michelle. So welcome, Michelle Polito. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, thank you so much. So you had your, your family was on, half your family. No, I, I imagine there's more to your family than that, but two of your cousins that were on already. And uh, I think, you know, I think it was Jenna who was like, yeah, you should, you should talk to Michelle. Um, so I'm really excited to talk uh, about your business and your path leading up to coming back to Scranton. But I always like to give everyone an opportunity in the beginning just to share a little bit about, about yourself, your background. You grew up in Northeast PA, whatever you want to share. Yeah, so we actually, um, you know, just tapping into my cousins a little bit, we do come from a family of entrepreneurs. So starting with, um, you know, my mom and, you know, my cousins, um, my mother had a, a woman's hair salon downtown Scranton for many years called Mickey's Hair Salon. Um, she was kind of the first one to have that full, full service salon here in the Scranton area. Um, my uncle has restaurants here. Um, cousins have restaurants. You know, we talked about Jenna having her businesses, Tara doing her thing in basketball, and her father was, you know, in basketball forever in the area. So um, we all kind of, you know, really uh, dove into becoming part of the community in this area, which I think is really great. Um, and hence the reason why we always go to these empowerment leadership conferences together. And, you know, we're always kind of moving in packs, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, and then you know, which leads me to, to meeting you and, and bringing me here today. So um, I actually, um, I was born in New Jersey and my family moved back to Pennsylvania when I was about four and grew up here in um, the Green Ridge, Dunmore area. I went to Dunmore High School and after school, I um, started at the University of Scranton and I was bio pre-med and was there for about a year and thought, hmm, I don't know if uh, dissecting animals is, or, you know, animals or frogs is for me. And at the time I was working full-time for United Colors of Benetton as a buyer, a system buyer, I guess you would say, um, here in the Scranton area. And I would go on their buying trips down to Washington, D.C. And I thought, God, I really love doing that. So I, you know, I, I, was thinking to myself, if I don't want to be a doctor, what else do I want to be? And my pediatrician at the time, it was so funny, her name was Dr. Ventry in the area. She always wore designer clothes. She always had like a Chanel outfit on and Ferragamo shoes. And I always loved the way she dressed. And I thought I wanted to be a pediatrician because Dr. Ventry always looked so good. <laughs> but then I realized that I really just wanted to get into fashion. And it really wasn't about being a pediatrician or chemistry or biology or anything like that. It was about, um, you know, fashion and learning to be creative and, you know, buying and getting into merchandising and retailing and all of that. So I left University of Scranton, went to FIT, and I graduated FIT with a fashion merchandise managing degree, um, a bachelor's degree from there. And my first job out of college was with Ralph Lauren's daughter, Dylan Lauren, um, at Dylan's Candy Bar. 
So I worked for Dylan for a long time. And then Lackawanna County actually um, came to me and said, we, um, we have a retail section of our business. Would you like to come back and run it? So this was in my like mid 20s. And I thought, wow, what a great opportunity to come home, do what I love to do, be close to my parents and, you know, still elevate my career, at, you know, to a director role. I was I was an assistant buyer at the time and it just felt like the right thing. So I moved back here and I was running Lackawanna County's um, coal mine tour, visitor center, um, trolley museum. The ski, they own the ski resort, Montage Mountain at the time. So I did all the buying and merchandising for those um, entities. And let me and just, just real quickly, let me just pause you for those folks who don't know, because I only went once because it was really big at the time. So before you came back, you were in New York. Dylan's candy bar was kind of like, you could go in there and it was like, oh my, like, I don't think you could say Willy Wonka, but it was like, it was fantastical. It was magical. And they had all kinds of candy. So that was like, I really like, would you say a designer candy shop for people maybe who haven't seen it? So Dylan was definitely a pioneer in the candy world where she basically took um, nostalgic old time candies, bulk candy and made it fashionable. Yes, she was definitely and we all were as buyers creative and, you know, really focused on packaging, focused on how to elevate candy to make it a giftable item to make it cool. Um, And yes, it was very whimsical. It was like, you know, that saying walking, you know, walking into being a kid in a candy store, for sure, the multi demographics, um, you know, would be, you know, you know, I would say for the people that were coming in, it was from children up to people in their 80s that would come in and really enjoy the the atmosphere. Okay, yeah, because I, I remember it was really big. It, it was like in the media back it's been a while. Um, but I remember going to New York, think it was the coolest thing, like we have to visit there. And of course, buy something just because but for folks who don't know like it was a really and you know as as uh michelle is saying like elevating candy and i do remember the bins and all the different candy so that was really cool but i didn't want to interrupt you so you came back so as lackawanna county you were uh responsible for all of those would you call those like tourist attractions kind of thing yeah or? tourist attractions um you know souvenir gift shops for all the tourist attractions um and then you know as i was here for a year or so i you know, kind of realized I didn't think moving back to Pennsylvania this soon was for me. So I took a leap of faith and I moved to Miami, Florida, where Mm -hmm. I worked for Saks Fifth Avenue in Bell Harbor. So I got a job with Saks Fifth Avenue um, in their, um, their, I guess you would say their like senior management office or corporate office down in Florida, Um, really learned the retail side of the business. Um, and, you know, I worked a little bit as a department manager in a few of the, uh, different departments there. And at that point, you know, I was there for about five years and then I thought, I really want to get back into buying because that was my passion and I missed what I was doing. So I ended up moving back to New York. I got promoted into the intimate apparel buying office for Saks Fifth Avenue. So I moved back to New York city, which I never thought you know, I would do after leaving there from college. So here I am this like full circle. I went from New York to back to Pennsylvania. Then I went to Miami. Now I'm back in New York city. And a funny story. It was like the coldest winter of all time. And I'm standing on the corner of fifth and fifth Avenue. And I had no umbrella. I was in like, you know, flats with no tights or a dress. And it was a torrential downpour, freezing cold. It was like a typical New York storm. And here's this new Miami girl moving back to the city. And I remember I had no coins for a bus. I had no Metro card. I was calling my mother, crying my eyes out. Like, what did I do? I just left, you know, sunny skies, you know, sunny and blue skies to come back here. And, you know, she, her advice was, don't worry. You'll, you know, you'll get back on track, which I ended up doing, of course, obviously. And um, yeah, I had a nice career at Saks for about um, 13 and a half years. I was a buyer for intimate apparel, and then um, designer men's shoes. Hmm. So I bought for a lot of, um, you know, the big time designer shoes, Gucci, Prada, Ferragamo, um, and then some of the um, the top designers at the time, like Giuseppe Zanotti was a really fun buy for us because we got to do exclusive product with him. And I got to sit in while he sketched um sneakers for us and then you know of course then we got I got to see how we took the sneakers from 
inception of his sketching to market, you know, to the floor, having them sold, events around it, and, and what the outcome was. So that was a really cool experience. That sounds um, amazing. Yeah, that sounds wild. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. He was so, such an eccentric um, designer. He was very cool. So from that point, um, I ended up realizing that, um, you know, I missed candy. <laughs> and Dylan came back and she said, you know, she was looking for a, a senior buyer at the time. And she found me again. And, you know, we always had a nice friendship and, and working relationship. And so I left Saks and went back to Dylan's Kickler as a senior buyer. And I helped Dylan um, take her store, you know, over in totality from her one flagship store in New York City, which was, you know, to your point, you remember being, you know, in the news. And it really, I think they deemed it as one of the largest candy stores in the world at the time. Um, and then so from one store to about 30 locations um, over my career with her, and we opened in airport locations, and I opened a store in Dubai, and I opened a store in Kuwait, which was exciting. Um, so really learning how to um, expand, you know, into international business and, and what it takes to do that. So that was really fun. Um, and then, you know, at, you kind of get to a plateau in every you know, in every job you're at. So I left Dylan's um, after a certain amount of time, and I went to a company called Sugar Factory. Now, Sugar Factory is also a large um, international company. Um, they have, it's kind of like a Cracker Barrel style where it's in-room dining, and then um, they also have a retail section of their business. And everything is candy infused. They have cocktails and desserts, and everything is just bursting with, excitement and fun and candy. So that was a fun transition. Um, you know, it was a good career step uh, for me being, uh, you know, a, a, in a senior role with them. And, um, you know, I also got to really get into the food side of the business, which I really didn't dabble with a lot at Dylan's, um, you know, when, when I worked there. So um, worked for Sugar Factory for a while, and then pandemic hit. And mm -hmm. because it was indoor dining, everyone got furloughed. Um, senior management, they kept us on healthcare, but, you know, I didn't know where it was going to go from there. So, um, you know, we're all home, you know, collecting our stimulus checks and hanging out at home. And I thought, you know, it, what will I do if I can't go back to Sugar Factory? So I ended up brainstorming this company, Electric City Suites. I said, you know, if I ever had to move back to Scranton, which I never thought I'd move back to New York, I never thought I'd leave Miami, I never thought I'd go to Pennsylvania. But you never know. So that whole circle of life happened. And here I am back in Pennsylvania. So after brainstorming Electric City Suites, which, you know, started off as a side hustle or labor of love during the pandemic, um, ended up becoming something. And, um, you know, I ended up moving back to Scranton um, because, you know, my mom ended up passing. My dad got sick. It was this whole you know, ch change in life. And um, Sugar Factory wanted me to move to Delray Beach, Florida, which I could not do. That was where their corporate off office was. And I couldn't leave my father. So I thought I need to go all in on my business. And um, that leads me to where I am today. So I have a website, uh, electriccitysuites.com. Um, I am wholesaling my product locally throughout um, the Northeastern uh, Pennsylvania area in markets and um, grocery stores, hair salons, gift shops. Um, and then I also um, wholesale nationally through other distribution channels and hotels. So um, yeah, so I'm kind of um, at a place now where, you know, Electric City Suites is where I'm at. And uh, growing my business has been a, a fun success as I'm back in Pennsylvania. It's quite the journey. Um, I want to ask you, I'm going to dive more a little bit into uh, what you offer with your business, but let me ask you, because clearly you've seen a lot, done a lot. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting that you helped to open stores in Dubai and Kuwait. Um, I'm just curious, what was that like culturally? Did you have to learn a lot there? Or, I mean, obviously business is different internationally, which I can't even fathom what that's yeah. like, but even culturally. 
So interesting, um, you know, you really need to pay attention to ingredients as you get to the Middle East. Um, you know, there's no pig gelatin. You can't have anything that has to do with alcohol, even if it's not actually alcohol, but it's a picture of it. Um, there's certain dyes that can't be used there. So that was a big part of, um, of the process was really the analytics and analysis of how to get the product there and making sure that everything um, was checked and double checked. And we dotted our I's and crossed our T's because if a container leaves the US and gets to the Middle East and one thing is wrong, they dump the whole container into the ocean. So, you know, that was a, a big challenge just for us being new to doing all of this is finding the right players in the industry who can help facilitate um, all of the logistics of getting everything there. Um, but then we did have a management group that we dealt with. Um, they all spoke English, which was great. Um, and the beauty of being over there is they love sweets in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So it's a big part of their culture. They love, they love the indulgence. It's, they love everything about sweets. So that was actually really fun to work with them, um, because they were so excited about the brand being there. And, um, you know, we really got to send a lot of our top products over, um, you know, so that was, that was fun. Yeah. That's so interesting. And when you worked with Dylan, was there ever a thought or, uh, because you were working with her and had that rapport that you'd ever want to work for, uh, her father for the Ralph Lauren company or Lauren? Um, no, actually, I guess I never thought of that. Um, you know, I grew up, my mother loved Ralph Lauren. She was a, she was definitely a Navy, Ralph Lauren, Navy blazer type woman who was always, <laughs> you know, had her navy blazer on. And, um, you know, so we grew up in, in also an area, you know, it's Grant where, you know, being preppy, you know, in the 80s was a thing. And, you know, we all had pop collars and, you know, you know, polo shirts and all of that. So, you know, funny enough, you know, I did grow up, I feel with a lot of Ralph Lauren's inspiration in our home and, and clothing around. But, um, you know, Dylan is, um, Dylan's definitely different. She, um, she doesn't even wear, I don't, I mean, not a lot, but I would say like, you know, on a day to day, she doesn't even wear her dad's um, brand. You know, she was, she's her own thing. She does her own thing. And um, we, you know, we really bonded. Um, and candy is such a fun way um, to be creative and, you know, with the colors in candy and, and how you can really um, make it an art form. And, um, you know, it could tie back to movies. It could tie back to, um, you know, uh, music, it's, it's just kind of, there's so much um, inspiration in, in candy that, yeah, it's, been, it was really fun. And, and Dylan and I are still friendly. So we, we still connect, you know, um, regularly to catch up to see how we're doing. So we built a nice relationship over the years. Just That's great. wonderful. Yeah. So now, so you have Electric City Suites. Now, I know when I saw you, you had candy bars. Uh, uh, just share with so my audience understands, like, what what all do you offer? I mean, is it, uh, I know you have a variety of different flavors, man, and they are delicious. Uh, just, yeah. just share what you have, what you offer. So um, my signature collection is Belgian chocolate um, that's uh, made here in the U.S., um, I have 10 different unique flavor profiles. So I have everything from um, a red velvet cake to a mint bar, salted toffee crunch. I have a salted caramel. Um, and then, of course, you're, you know, some tried and trues like a milk. And I do have a 54% dark. Um, I have a strawberry infused dark chocolate, which is really great. It's called Champs and Berries. It has a little bit of a champagne hint to it. Um, and um, an almond, dark chocolate almond bar. Um, what am I missing? I'm missing my s'mores bar and my crispy treat. So that is the collection. Um, I do a, a signature 10 pack of all the flavors, which is a great variety pack um, for corporate gifting or um, special occasions, um, which then leads me to, um, you know, doing special occasions and corporate gifts. So that's kind of been a niche in the area that's um, really been driving the business. Um, I work with, you know, local people who need something for a birthday party or a wedding anniversary, um, wedding anniversary, um, what else? Um, baby showers, wedding showers, um, and then corporate gifts. So people come to me, I could fully customize any one of my products, wrapping bars, 
I could also, um, I've just gotten into uh, like gummy candies and other types of candy. So if you, you know, it, it's not on my site yet as an actual um, assortment added to the, you know, to my overall collection, but it is something offered, um, you know, if someone comes to me and, and we talk about their needs and um, also offering candy bars, um, like a display bar for a special occasion or event. So, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of products that I can create. I guess that's a good way to put it. Um, you know, if you don't find it on my site or you don't see it on some of my social media channels, um, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time I could source it, find it, um, and have it made for you. So. That's, yeah, that's really cool. Um, it's funny, I was just thinking, like, with our last heat wave, and I know it's not like you're sitting there with a box of chocolates in your house or anything, but is Actually. it, or maybe you are, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you do have a box there. <laughs> you would be surprised where I have chocolate these days. <laughs> is it challenging with that? I mean, clearly you know what you're doing and you have this, but like, is it harder even for this industry alone? Because I know like myself, I had like a, I like dark chocolate. I had a dark chocolate Hershey kiss in my purse and it was in the car and I'm like, okay, that's gone bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it is even from like a shipping perspective. Um, I'm on some of these distribution networks, um, you know, that are online and I get, some random um, orders that come in and, and one, you know, that isn't so random anymore. It's kind of been a, a standard order is from Yellowstone National Park and Mount Rushmore, which have been really fun. So it's a um, it's a company called Under Canvas and it's a glamping site that are on the um, resorts. So um, I believe they're using it for, you know, their their markets or in room hospitality which has been really fun. But when they place orders, now it's the, you know, the shipping and logistics of getting it to them and making sure the ice, you know, it's ice packed like any other, you know, chocolate company would ship. So, you know, that, that makes the um, operations and logistics a little bit more challenging. Um, you know, the price points of shipping go up and, you know, summertime is always hard for chocolate. So um, I do a lot of uh, markets and, um, and doing these markets in town, um, or uh, farmers markets or, you know, any type of event that's outside, I always need to keep all my chocolate in a cooler. So I do have a system where I, you know, display a small amount of them on the table and everything else is, is stored in a cooler. But um, I guess you figure it out. And that's why I think a lot of the um, candy options that are offered are a good, another good option to start sending to my clients. And that's what I, I usually refer them to. Um, as opposed to chocolate in this, in these times, the, in the heat wave, as we can say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After seven days of that, it was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Things were melting quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what do you see for the, right now it's online and it's in places and I've seen it in various places throughout the city. And in fact, I'll, I'll give another shout out to uh, Megan Alpert. I became one of her clients recently and one of your chocolates was in the mug she gave me. And I'm like, Oh, that was delicious. And, you know, and then she told me, of course it was yours. Um, yeah. What do you have plans for like a brick and mortar or do you not see it going in that direction? Yeah. I, you know, I've thought about it. A lot of people have asked me for a brick and mortar. I just haven't found the right location. Um, it is a big, you know, getting into retail, um, you know, getting, you know, especially after pandemic, I think just the retail as a whole has changed so much um, in the community. But, um, you know, I have definitely seen that my customers are asking for it. So, um, you know, I think if I find the right space, um, you know, and it makes sense financially, it will definitely happen. Yeah. Well, like you said, it is a big investment. Yeah, but I do, you know, I do think Scranton needs a souvenir, a candy souvenir store. So, you know, that's where I, that's what I see Electric City Suites being in this area, you know, somewhere that, you know, people can go and, you know, the brand is such a souvenir to Northeastern PA and, and the Scranton area. Um, but, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, in the industry, as I've talked about my brand that, you know, Electric City Suites could be any city, right? Any city could be the Electric City. So unless you know Scranton, you know, your city can also be the Electric City. So that's true. But if you, you know, if you do get the brick and mortar, think of the fun you could have with office characters and, you know, all kinds of great landmarks and everything. 
Oh, definitely. So I actually do an, um, an office wrapped bar for Cooper's. So Cooper's has the office gift shop. If, um, you know, if you haven't known, but yeah, they do carry custom wrapped bar for the office from electric oh, city. Cool. Which is cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, that's exciting. Um, so what would you say you've done a lot and you, you know, you said you went to FIT and clearly you see the creativity in candy and marketing candy and all the possibilities, but from all the experience you had, what are a couple highlights that you, I mean, here you are at your life, I know, but it's nice to look back sometimes. What are some of the things that, that stand out for you that you're like, Oh, I wouldn't trade that for the world. Some of the shining spots that you like to smile about now. In terms of my career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as I mentioned, working for Saks and, and sitting in with all of these top designers, um, you know, was definitely a highlight in my career. Um, I met Oscar de la Renta. That was pretty amazing. You know, oh. um, who else? Um, Chris Pratt. He was pretty fun to meet. Um, we used to do a lot with the Ronald McDonald house. So we would go and we would bring candy to the kids at the Ronald McDonald house, which was really you know, a, a fun aspect and, you know, heartwarming to, you know, to go and meet with all the kids. And then we would also, you know, partner with whatever celebrity was there at the time. So um, Chris Pratt was there and we, um, you know, handed out candy with him and, and got to meet the children. So he was a fun, um, a fun celebrity to, you know, rub elbows with, I guess, and, and do something for good for the community. Um, but I, you know, I think, you know, as an, you know, a woman in business and, you know, having like aspirations throughout my career was, you know, being able to travel to different parts of the country to see how other, you know, other areas of, of the world live and other areas of the country live. And it really gives you a broader perspective of what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, if you you know, if you're opening a business and you're just thinking like, what do, you know, if you want to keep your business small, obviously it's, you know, what is the demographics in the surrounding areas? You know, what are their needs? But if you are looking to expand nationally and, and to really look at what's going on in the world or what's going on in the, in the United States, you know, you kind of have to understand, you know, what people are doing in other parts of, of you know, the world. So I think traveling and being able to, to live in different areas was definitely, um, you know, a big growing point for me in my career and, and helping me get to where I am today. Now you yeah. said, oh, you asked me in my career. So let me ask you, how about not in your career? Any, anything personally and not, and I'm not looking for like personal, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anything you'd want to share from your, that from your own personal development or just places where you're like, wow, one of my favorite things of living in Florida was like certain things that you just really enjoyed for yourself. Yeah. Um, I really love music. So, you know, one of the main, you know, points of living in New York City was being next to or around a lot of music venues. And, you know, I feel like music always inspires me to help grow. Um, I think also um, traveling, um, I, you know, and I didn't even touch on this, but I do have another company called um, Hi HYDNYC. So I, I launched a handbag line in 2018, and that was from traveling to Calistoga. So traveling also you know, my personal side has helped me grow um, from my for my career. And um, I went to Calistoga out in wine country, and I couldn't hold my phone and my purse, my phone didn't fit in my purse. And I was trying to hold a wine glass. And I thought I need to go back and design a purse that I could fit everything and I could take it <laughs> traveling and it could be interchangeable. And I did and I, I launched a handbag line. And um, you know, I sold a couple collections and it was really fun. And I still have it um, open, um, hydnyc.com. I have a website um, with product from my last collection. There's a few, you know, few items left. And, um, you know, a lot of people are asking me if I'm going to create another. So that's something down the pipe that could possibly be, um, you know, another handbag line um, on my, uh, my first business. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I think, you know, traveling, music, um, you know, I like I said, living by the beach was amazing. It's, um, you know, really, that was an incredible time of my life. I feel like I've lived a hundred lives. I'm 44, but up until now, I feel like I've lived, you know, a million times over, so... I guess it's just what's next. <laughs> yeah. And that's great that you bring all that back here 
back home because you've gotten all these different perspectives and experiences. Travel is so key. I mean, that's, that's gotta be, that's wonderful uh, that you've had that experience. Um, would you say right now that you have a bug to be like a serial entrepreneur here with, uh, with your different businesses going? <laughs> uh, yes. I think I always, I've always have been, and I think I continue to always uh be creative and see what's what's next and you know will electric city suites continue to grow possibly you know is that going to end and something else will start um i actually i just wrote a children's book so this is interesting (laughs) about my dog yeah um it's a true story about my puppy and um an alley cat and it's really cute and um so I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking of possibly um, publishing that and seeing where that goes. And yeah, so I'm always I'm always thinking of something new. I feel like I'm I always try to be creative and try to, um, you know, broaden my my skills or learn something new. So um, stay tuned, I guess, on that. (laughs) Yeah, well, and it's you've got clearly got the creativity. And I think people with, um, you know, I know there are many things I'm not good at, but I'm a creative type. And I think when you're creative type, you're always you're thinking of ways, innovative things and innovative ways to solve problems. And there's, there's just, you, I think we get stopped less a little bit with obstacles. I mean, we still do, but we're always thinking of different ways to create and keep moving and, and offering people different things. And I think that your mind will never stop with that. Yes, that's definitely true. I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse mm. because I'm always thinking of something. I, you know, I'm always thinking of a product or you know, if I see something or I'll, then I'll Google it and think, oh my God, I, you know, did I think of this? And, you know, of course it's already been done or, um, at one point over during college, um, I thought of a shoe that was interchangeable that you could take the heel off and it be- could become a flat. And at the time, I don't think it was out there. And, um, I went to the shoe repair man downtown Scranton and he said, you have a mind of a scientist. And I thought, I don't know about that, but I do know when I'm wearing heels in Manhattan and I need to walk somewhere, I would be great if it could become a flat. And then lo and behold, a couple of years later, someone came out with with that concept. But, um, you know, it's really fun to to always think of something new and, you know, keep your mind moving. So, yeah. So if not a scientist, at least an innovator, that's for darn sure. Right. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Well, let me ask you, as I start to close it, uh, close up here, or wind up here, uh, you mentioned wine. So of course, I don't always ask guests this. And of course, my, my podcast is called Uncorked with Funny Wine Girl. And initially, I think people, everyone thought it was about wine. I like wine. And, you know, I do comedy shows at wineries and things. But I don't always ask my guests about that. In fact, I've kind of gotten away from that. But you mentioned, since you mentioned wine, uh, do you want to share what are some of your favorites? What kind of wine do you like to drink? Oh, Wow. Um, sure. I like, I, you know what? I don't discriminate on wine. Um, (laughs) as they say, rosé all day, I can (laughs) definitely drink a nice French rosé. That's like very pale pink, blush pink. Um, you know, I love a Pinot Noir. Um, you know, I think that kind of goes with everything. Um, in, in, uh, Napa, you know, if I'm thinking of a vineyard there, one of my favorite vineyards there is owned by an Italian family. It's called Del Dado and it's actually in a cave. So you go into their, you go in a cave to, to their vineyard and they walk you through the caves and that's where all of their wine is fermented. And then at the end they have these big barrels and they give you a charcuterie board and you drink wine and hang out with the family. And it's really cool. So that was a really cool experience out in out in Napa. Um, they have beautiful wines. I think you could get them online. I'm not sure. You might have to call the vineyard directly, but um, mm, that yeah, sounds cool to be amazing. in a cave. Yeah, no, that they're like that's like the best thing about you know going to Napa. But there are some amazing um, vineyards around here and, and wineries that I've definitely you know been to as well. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's it's funny. And I think it's become wine has become definitely more accessible. 
Um, I joke because I say I'm not, believe me, I'm not, I'm far from pretentious, but I'm not someone who likes a lot of what's popular, like the sweet stuff, the, the slushies, the like really fruity or really sweet wine. Like that's not really my bag. So I get excited when I can find like a, I'm a, a white wine drinker, like a Chenin Blanc, a Gruner Vet Liner, a Gewürztraminer or something like that. I want to get into reds because of less sugar and I feel like they'll be healthier for me, but I'm just stuck on the white wine. <laughs> Yeah, I do like white wine, too. I mean, you know, a Klaus de Bois, I could drink a Chardonnay all day. <laughs> um, you know, so, yeah, I think, you know, I don't like to drink alone. So it's all like who I'm with and the company I'm with. So, you know, depending on the event or where I'm at or the dinner I'm having. So, you know, I kind of go with the flow. I like that. I, I, you know, I don't like to drink alone. So it's the company I'm with. That's nice. Yeah. Cause then yeah. it's like whatever the mood is or the vibe, whatever you got going on. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I just, you know, like I said, I don't discriminate. So if you know <laughs> the white wine bottle open, I will drink white wine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Easy to get along with. That's good. <laughs> Well, is there anything else? I think we covered a lot and I I really have great appreciation for uh, all of your experience and your travel. I think that's awesome. I think it's wonderful too, that you're here uh, being an asset here in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I think we have incredible businesses. I think we have incredible art, incredible people uh, and everything, but is there anything else that, you know, in closing, maybe you'd want to share any words of wisdom for anyone uh, out there, other young women, or just anything that you feel that we didn't cover that you wanted to talk about? Um, I guess some words of wisdom is, you know, like follow your dreams. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I've always loved, you know, the career I built in candy and, you know, if you really focus on, on, you know, on your dreams or what you want to do with your, with your life and what makes you happy, I think that's like a big thing, you know, making sure that you're happy with what you do. And, um, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, continue to, uh, to focus on, you know, the positive stuff in life too. There's so much negativity that's going on in the world. And, you know, everyone always, you know, does look to me and say, you know, that I have a very positive outlook on life, even though I've had a lot of, um, you know, tragedies happen or whatever in my life or, you know, so I, st- I try to still look at, you know, the positives that are going on, um, around me. So that yeah. keeps going. I think that's great advice because I do think that that's a key, a really key ingredient to people's success. Uh, You can't move forward if you're stuck or ruminating or just focusing on all that's bad because you won't get anywhere. I don't think. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. And people can find, is it electriccitysweets.com? Is that it? It is electriccitysweets.com. I'm also on all social media channels, Electric City Suites. So I do post a lot on, you know, Instagram, Facebook of different events that I have going on. Um, you know, you can call me, DM me for any um, special occasions or, you know, corporate gifting that you have. I know corporate gifts and the holidays are coming up. So, um, you know, yeah, reach out and I'm um, always willing to help, you know, work with anyone in the area. Okay, well, that sounds great. So thank you so much, Michelle Polito of Electric City Suites. I will put uh, the a link to the website in the show notes. So you folks out there, check it out. And if you're out and about in Northeastern Pennsylvania and you see the candy, you will find it in many different places. Definitely give it a try. I've, I've had at least two candy bars and they were both delicious. Uh, <laughs> and I love dark chocolate. And I the one that Megan had given me, uh, her Joy World uh, mug and the, you know, the uh, candy bar in it. And I didn't expect to, uh, honestly, like it because I've I've just like grown accustomed to dark chocolate and I loved it it was delicious so uh, yeah. definitely people out there definitely give this chocolate a try it's very good um, so again thank you to Michelle for sharing your time and your expertise and talent with us uh, definitely check out uh, Electric City Suites and follow on social media and I want to thank you my listeners as always um, if you are interested in becoming a podcast sponsor like Emily Hickox of Budget Through Life who is my uh, my first sponsor and I'm excited to have her confidence and belief in me please reach out to me and don't think that you need to have a ton of money even if you want to sponsor one episode or make a donation and keep in mind you don't need to have uh, a budget to, to help out if you listen to the podcast and want to help support it please 
please be sure to share it on your social media. Tell someone you know, tell a friend or foe or anyone that you know. And uh, you can also write a review or testimonial or anything like that. Or, hey, next time you see me, just tell me that you listen and you enjoy it. Because I I don't know about Michelle, but folks, especially artists, (laughs) we like to hear that someone's actually out there listening and cares and likes what we're doing. So it's right. It's nice to hear that sometimes. It's not what we live on, but it is nice to hear it. So um, so thank you again. And thank you, everyone, for listening. As I always say, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of my wine glass.